हेलो Hello everyone. Warm, warm welcome and greeting to all the dignitaries, faculty members, and the participants. This is Professor Jigar Pandya, Assistant Professor, CSEIT Department, Rai University, welcoming you on behalf of RU Blockchain Center of Excellence, Department of CSEIT, Rai University, Rai School of Engineering, Ahmedabad. Rai University has been providing quality education with industry interaction csit department at rai university offers various courses including btech cyber security bsc data science btech csit mtech csit mscit bca bscit and diploma in cs and it advanced technology webinar series is launched with the objective of providing in depth knowledge from an industry perspective it's my pleasure to introduce our today's speaker mr raj kapoor founder india blockchain alliance mr rajiv bodoloy director general tpcr and mr ritesh director tpcr now uh, mr rajiv bodoloy is the director general of uh, trade Pro, uh, promotional counseling of robotics and automation tpcr is a btech mechanical and project management from iit delhi with two decades of industry and corporate exposure with global organization and indian mncs like texas instruments hdfc billa group etc now would i like to request mr rajiv bodoloy for sharing his kind words with us for the today's session Well, over to uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor Jigar, and uh, welcome, Raj, our keynote speaker today. So we are really delighted to have you here today, and thank you, Dr. Selis. Uh, it's really been wonderful to have you, uh, all of you together once again here. So uh, before we start our session today, I'd just like to set the tone with two, three very keynote uh, things. Most of the things would be covered by Raj in his wonderful insights and presentations, global insights, and uh, what the technology has to offer to all the students. Uh, but before that, let me also quickly take you that TPCR world. We promote all the emerging technologies like blockchain, AI, AR, VR, IoT, robotics, and all. But uh, <clears throat> we, our working model includes uh, targeted global companies. which are engaged to develop projects and contents to be delivered into education institution industry or government depending on the service and uh, generally for blockchain i uh, we are the implementation partner of india blockchain alliance which is a global consortium working very closely with across the globe for blockchain and truly as i say that think global act local that's what is uh, applicable when it comes to india blockchain alliance and blockchain and raj has been instrumental i mean doing a wonderful work globally connecting all of uh, us and bringing the same thing to the institution uh, as a single point and uh, it's been really uh, wonderful working closely with india blockchain alliance and uh, today uh, when we talk about blockchain i would also like to say that it is much beyond uh, information technology actually it is it is very much like an institutional technology uh, unlike any other emerging technology when we talk about ai iot or ar vr because we have been dealing with all the technologies primarily but when it comes to blockchain it is very unique in a way because when an organization adopt blockchain it is not just uh, a technology Uh, the entire paradigm shift an entire paradigm shift happens in the business implementation that like how they see at business before blockchain and after blockchain so that's why for all the engineers out there all the non engineers out there who can take and embrace this technology so i'd like to put a small note here that uh, right at this moment 2021 22 i think the key success lies in getting to know a lot of use cases and white papers that how this technology is adopted across different organizations globally 
okay so that's where i think uh, this is uh, very uh, critical and i think india blockchain alliance is doing a wonderful work bringing in all the global use cases in just one kt to the institution also uh, there are wonderful things like global certification so when a student uh, goes for global certification uh, what does that mean? I mean, uh, they get globally certified into Microsoft, Cisco, and all other certifications. But when it comes to blockchain, what is uh, uh, what what is it available right now? So I think global certification <laughs> sets the tone for everyone in one platform, one single platform, which also brings in all the scope of global internships and live projects, exposure of all these things through India Blockchain Alliance, and I think that's really wonderful bringing in uh, people from, uh, I mean, Europe, Australia, or whether it is uh, Middle East, Africa, US, or UK, or wherever we uh, tell it, Canada. So bringing all the best practices right there to the institution, I think that's what makes it very unique. And I think we already have a global center of excellence in blockchain, and we are expecting that gradually, step by step, block by block, we will get maybe by October, November, few global certification uh, certified professionals from your university to begin with. And then I think uh, the journey will begin step by step. And I think uh, with that, I would not take much of a time today. I think the wonderful thing Raj is there to take us through the journey. What are the wonderful things that are happening in the blockchain arena? Where the students, why they should be going for it? Okay. So I think uh, that's all from my side uh, in a nutshell today. And we'll keep meeting because we have the global center of excellence anyway. There are so many interesting things that could happen here. Not only uh, certification, but even research and a lot of other things. I mean, life projects and so many things that are happening across the globe. We are bringing it right to your institution for your students. And thank you so much uh, once again, Professor Jigar, uh, for uh, sharing this platform. And also, Dr. Sales, thank you once again. And uh, I think, Raj, over to you without keeping you waited <laughs> much. Hi, nice, hi. Nice. Oh, 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 I enjoyed that. We are more it. eager to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it, it is a good pause. I was, in a, I was doing a session just before this. Uh, from yeah. 9 o'clock, I was on a session for two hours. Yeah. So this gave me a little time to catch my breath. So I'm very happy about that. I, I know that. That's why I thought that. <laughs> Let me. In fact, in the middle of the session, message me. Can you join now? I said, just yeah. give me a little time. I'll come on the dot, but I will come uh, because yeah. I was on a session. Anyways, uh, it, that session was a very important session. And that's I can share this news with all of us for the first time. And this is going to be news even for Rajiv Bordoloi and Team right. TPCRA, right. which has been a fantastic extension of what we are doing. Whatever we are doing, we cannot complete it without you guys, Rajiv, Pratish, and company. I mean, thank you, thank you thank so much you. because it requires everything to be a team effort, collaboration. Everything works well then. Academic collaborations, yes. Implementation and getting the knowledge. Yes. You told me a very nice thing just now. You talked about uh, think global, act local. So, well, Ahmedabad is a very classic example. And that's where we are right now. Ahmedabad is the only, I mean, Gujarat is the only place, I think it's Ahmedabad, where we have a vegetarian subway. Right? That is international company thinking the way we think. I want to like that. That's one. And India is the only country in the whole world where we have a vegetarian aloo tikki burger. Right. That is India. That's think global, act local. And that is True. exactly what we do in blockchain. We bring in the best practices of different countries, different blockchains. Let's not talk countries. Let's talk different blockchains. We bring in the best practices keep it ready for the Indian market space, for the Indian economy, for the Indian enterprise, and make it relevant to all our students. Because when they go out of the university, out of this college, they will get into a world where they'll say, okay, I learned about Ethereum, Hyperledger or something, but this is totally different. Because we have our local aloo tiki burger here. We are not making a beef burger, guys. We are making an aloo tiki burger. We got to know what's happening in India. So thanks, Rajiv, for the introduction. And thanks, Shilesh and Jigar. Thank you for having me here. I'm going to start my presentation. So uh, this, I like this platform, StreamYard. It's really a nice one. It's become popular, so I'm quite getting used to it now. Uh, let me share my screen. And 
let me have a window and let me start my presentation. Uh, before I start my presentation, I'd like to show you something to my students, to the faculty, to everybody. It's my collection of what's happening in the news. Just let me just put up my camera and switch this on here. Uh, is the screen, Is can you see a screen here? Can we see a blank screen? Yeah, it's a so blank, blank, screen. blank screen. Right, hang on. I have, it's not sharing. Just let me try and share again. Just let me see, one second. I'll just share it again. It didn't share the first time. Yeah. I'm sure it'll share now. I'll share a window. Visible, guys? Yeah, it is. Visible? Yes, it is. Perfect. Yeah, it is. This is a little collection of what happened in the news last week in the blockchain space. Why I'm showing you in the beginning, you will now know blockchain is getting big in every space. It's getting mainstream. And Rajiv said we get some certifications by September, October. I say, why wait so long? I mean, there are a lot of projects and a lot of jobs coming in now. You know, let's, let's get it right. Anyway, have a look at this. something it's good to share what's happening all over the my friends one sec yeah all right now that we've seen what's happening in the news let's get straight into a presentation let's see what's happening let me introduce blockchain to all of you here because blockchain is frankly speaking literally taking over everything so here's my screen i am sure it's visible can you see the screen now can i start just a really? moment. Yeah, yeah, it is visible. It is visible. Very good. Yes. Yeah. Stream that takes maybe a little a few seconds. Here. All right. Let excuse, me introduce uh, excuse you. me, uh, Raja. Yes. So uh, you are not visible on your cam. I guess your cam turned off. Uh my video is turned off, but can you see the screen? Okay. Uh, you want the video on? Oh. Okay. All right. You'll see me later. You you have enjoy the presentation. You can see me later on again. All right. I'll come back. So this is an introduction, more like, let's go on a date with blockchain. Let's not make it a, it's not a boring lecture or something. It's just an introduction to a wonderful concept. It's a way of life. It's the way life is going to be over the next five to 10 years. For all of you, you will be touching blockchain in some way or the other from whichever stream you're coming from, whether it's a computer stream, technology, engineering, even arts commerce, MBA, you name it, law, agriculture. Trust me, everywhere it is, and the presentation will show you that. Rajiv, in the beginning, I said, blockchain is an institutional technology, not just an information technology. And there's a huge difference between the two. What's the difference? Rye University is an institution. It is. Students will come and students will go. Faculty may come and faculty will go. People will keep coming and going. But the institution never changes. It remains where it is. It's rock solid. Exactly how the blockchain technology will be rock solid. Technologies will come and technologies will go. Some will work with them. Some will not work. And life goes on. But blockchain remains where it is. Just like your university is. Governments, same way. The governments will come and governments will go. Presidents and prime ministers will come and they will go. But the nation never goes anywhere. That's exactly how blockchain is. And that's the brilliance of blockchain. Also, blockchain is institutional because it has the power to generate a lot of things, including economic demand, including a tokenized economy, 
That's the only technology that allows you to have a tokenized economy around you. None of the others. Others are great technologies. Great. But this is an institutional technology. So what is the history of it? Well, two things happened significantly in the last couple of years. The first was in Jan 2020, the Niti Aayog published a blockchain strategy plan for India. That was great. This was followed up, unfortunately, by the pandemic first. But after that came in Jan 2021, the national strategy on blockchain. So in Jan, the Ministry of Electronics and Technology, MIT, rolled out a national strategy on blockchain. Now, a national strategy national on blockchain, not on AI, not on cybersec, not on cloud, not on IoT, not on anything else. Not to say that they are anything less in technologies. Those are fantastic. However, for a nation, we need an institutional technology. While other technologies are great support, but we need to have an underpinning technology which is going to change everything in every system over the next five to ten years, maybe earlier. So this was a national strategy on blockchain, which I suggest you can download from the net. It is available on the ministry's website. It talks about the applications of blockchain in various government projects, from e-governance to land records to titling to voting, so many others. This is a really good document. It lays out the map for the next few years, and that is on how blockchain will be rolled out right across the nation. So wherever you're going to get at a job, you will have a blockchain impact directly or indirectly. And this document clearly mentions that. The biggest challenge, they say, we don't have manpower in blockchain. That is a problem. And that's where institutions play a very large role in actually equipping their students for, for a future which is belonging to them or the blockchain. And institutions are fantastic partners in this progress. And capacity building is the need of the R. But there we go, national strategy on blockchain. Here we have Forbes, which said a fantastic, we made a fantastic statement. It said, very soon, we won't trust anything unless it's backed by blockchain. When they talk about anything, it means literally any system. Yeah? Whether it is governance, whether it is a financial systems, whether it is, a, a, you know, land, agriculture, supply chain, utilities, you name them, it's got to go on the blockchain. Why? We will see the reason why. And then I'll make you remind you of this statement again. During the presentation, we will understand why of this statement. So another one said, blockchain, that's like Masters. She's a great person, talks a lot on blockchain, one of the early adopters of blockchain. And she said, blockchain is as important now as the internet was 25 years ago. Well, 25 years ago was the first institutional revolution. That was the internet. Now we have Web 3.0, that is the blockchain. But that is as significant. The significance of internet is not lost on any one of us. We can't do a day without the internet. Well, we're speaking to each other because of the internet, right? Here we are. We are also emails, browsing, WhatsApp, YouTube, whatever. It's all because of the internet. Economies have been created. Trillion-dollar companies have come up after the internet boom. Amazon, Facebook, Uber, uh, Uber uh, sorry, Ola, Uber, all that, all that stuff is all internet-based economies. They have become bigger than traditional businesses as well. Amazon is bigger than Ford Motors, and Ford Motors started many, many years back. It just shows the power of technology to catapult things into success. Here's another one. The old question used to be, is it in the database? It's going to be now replaced by, is it on the blockchain? Everything, my friends, is on the database. Academic records, financial records, health records, everything, for God's sake, is on the... If we are living in a digital economy, it's got to be. But is it on the blockchain is going to be the question now which will be spoken about. We need to know, is it on the blockchain? Remember, Forbes had a statement, we won't trust anything unless it's on the blockchain. Today, businesses ask each other, is your database on the blockchain? Is this particular process, your supply chain on the blockchain? Is your distributor network on the blockchain? These are the new questions. Nobody is asking, is it in the database? They're asking, is it on the blockchain? Of course, we have uh, you know, Bill Gates talking. He was a very big critic of blockchain once upon a time in 2017. 
Today, he says, well, it's a new game changer in the coming decade. He now does not believe it to be a bubble. And we have our own prime minister talking at an event last year, exactly a year ago. He said opportunities in technology include opportunities in frontier technologies of 5G and blockchain. Frontier technologies are technologies that have the power to have a socio-economic impact for a nation. They're not just technologies to make their workflows better or systemize, you know, the workflows, systems, etc. But it actually creates a socio-economic impact. So uh, before I go further, let me show you another little video. Let me show you a video. That video is even better because it tells us a little more. Yeah, well, let me share that, right? I'm sharing your video, which we, we've seen the Elon Musk. We've seen Jack Ma. We believe all of those guys. We see what they've done. They're real giants in this framework. Let's see what they have to say about blockchain. And here we go. Just here it is. Have a look at this video. We have the top brains talking about blockchain. And this video, by the way, my friends, was about two years old. Today, whatever they are saying has not only become true, but has actually exceeded what they were saying. Have a look at it. I think blockchain is going to be a very critical technology for the future development of the world. It's not only about financial. Blockchain technology is not about Bitcoins. Bitcoin is just a small function of the blockchain technology. I'm a strong believer of the blockchain technology. This is not about Bitcoin or digital currencies or crypto assets. It's the underlying blockchain technology. Now people can trust each other and they can transact with anything from money to uh, music to votes to uh, their identities peer to peer. Bitcoin is either MySpace or it's Facebook, I don't know. But blockchain is social media. So at the macro, blockchain is going nowhere. Right? Like blockchain is here to stay forever. And it's a very big thing. Enter blockchain. Satoshi Nakamoto, 2008, anonymous person, came up with this way of people transacting, doing business with assets peer to peer. And trust is not achieved by a middleman. It's achieved by cryptography, by collaboration, and by some clever code. And what that means is that we now have a native digital medium for value, effectively a software. I mean, so, so it's a what? distributed database that's managed independently, and that inherently, that inherent combination makes it a utility, makes it software effectively that has value in the chain. The business world of the future, say 10 years from now, is going to run on smart contracts. It's going to run on strong encryption and on you know peer-to-peer -peer based consensus mechanisms. So the core technologies underlying blockchain are going to pervade everything, just like the internet has, just like object-oriented software has, right? No. So the choice when I talk to people, I said, "What do you think will be here in 2040? Approximately 22 years from now, will gold still be here? Well, it's been here since eternity." <laughs> well, will the dollar will the dollar be here? Right. I don't think so. And, and will blockchain be here? I think so. We think of Bitcoin as a digital gold, so gold 2.0, but it's money, the first of the money that was ever built purposely for the internet. So it's sort of like what your email did to snail mail. Um, cryptocurrency or Bitcoin does for money. Well, Bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be. Uh, Bitcoin is is better than currency in that uh, you don't have to ha be physically in the same place. And, of course, for large transactions, currency can, can get pretty inconvenient. The customers we're talking about aren't trying to be anonymous. You know, they're willing to be uh, known. So 
the Bitcoin technology is key and you could add to it or you could build a similar technology uh, where there's enough attribution that people feel comfortable. This has nothing to do with uh, terrorism or uh, any type of, of money laundering. It's still very early. Um, institutions, everybody knows about it. Everyone's heard about it. And there's some very sophisticated people in even these banks who know about cryptocurrency. But they're still not really in the game yet. It's still very much a retail-driven market. Um, very much a lot of the actions out in Asia. So we, we still think it's the bottom of the first inning. It's If you read this book, you understand how we got here and how far it's come. But it's also just sort of the beginning in a lot of ways. Well, I think it is working. Um, and uh, there will be other currencies like it that may, may be even better. Um, but in the meantime, um, there's a big industry around Bitcoin. And um, you know, people have made fortunes out of Bitcoin. Some people have lost money out of Bitcoin. Um, it's wrong. Hmm? It's volatile. Yeah, but it is quite volatile. But, um, but you know, when you volatile, volatility, people can make money out of volatility. So, where I see crypto as effectively as a replacement for cash, but not as a replacement for as a primary. Uh, or not as I do not see crypto being the primary database. I would say there is a lot of uh, need for developers, even at the core protocol layer. So things like improving protocol scalability, uh, working on the client implementations, implementations of uh, things like proof of stake. Um, layer two systems, things like state channels and plasma could probably use a lot more smart people. Um, on the application stuff, I, mean, I guess you could always use more, but there's probably quite a lot more of that already. So we really saw this massive. We did. We, it's it's a massive space. It's just the beginning, and this was about a couple of years back. Lots of things have happened since then. Well, let's come back straight back to my presentation once again, and uh, we go back inside and see a little more, and make you see where your jobs and where opportunities are coming up for all of you as well. Okay, so what's a blockchain? Let's have, it's most of you must be knowing a little what is blockchain, but uh, just a minute. All right. Yeah. <laughs> What's a blockchain? Why did it start? Because it's very essential for, the, for us to know why it started when everything was in place. We had all technologies, but it started. And where are the jobs for all of us? Not only in India, but anywhere in the world. I will show you where they are. So for, what is a blockchain? In very simple terms, it is a timestamp series. Timestamp. Rubber stamp of time when the, when an entry was made. That's being done now also, no problem. But it's a series of immutable records. Immutable cannot be changed, altered, manipulated, deleted, lost, nothing. So lots of data managed by a cluster of computers. Different nodes spread across the globe, not owned by any one person. And if it's not owned by anybody, Come on, guys, very difficult to compromise. Yes. And each of these blocks are secured and bound to each other using a crypto principle called the chain. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. One piece links to the other. I'll show you how. So it could be any data, any transaction. As it goes, it gets put into a block. A block is like a box. The box. Sara information. You put it in a box. And when the box is full, another box is created, and all of them coincide with the other. Means each block will only add to the other block if the data in the first block is in sync or confirms with the second block, and then the third, then the fourth. All blocks have to agree on the data, and that's called a consensus mechanism of a blockchain. That's it. It's just putting all your data in a decentralized manner, not in one box, many boxes, each linked together by this chain, which is a like an invisible fingerprint. It's a crypto fingerprint. It attaches them, and it only attaches if both boxes are equal and in match in sync. And each of these blocks 
and then it becomes an irreversible change. What happened? Let's give a small idea. Let's give. Now we all have been to banks to transfer money, and this is a very good example of how blockchain is being used by banks now. By the way, which were initially opposed to the idea. Anyways, well, when I go to a bank now, if I have to transfer a thousand dollars to my daughter, I go to the bank, I fill in a form, very long form. I tell them I need to say transfer thousand dollars. Bank says, "Here, sir, look at the rate, sir. It's seventy-seven rupees today." I said, "What the hell? I just saw in the newspaper it's seventy-five bucks." No, sir. Bank rates are different. Why? Because of the banks decided. You and I don't decide that. All right. If I have to send, I'll make a check of seventy-seven thousand rupees, give it to them, and they'll say, "Right, sir, we will send it." And there will be a service charge. Who will pay the service charge, sir? You'll pay. I say, "Well, I'll have to pay." How much service charge? Say twenty dollars, for example. I'll say, why? Well, sir, no, you are in HDFC bank. Your daughter's bank is in some other bank. It has to go via some American bank. So there are some transaction charges. Well, all right. I'll tell him you do it. Otherwise, the money won't go. So yes, it goes. So I'm spending first more money on the dollar because it is the banks that control the rate, not the world rate, bank rate, India bank rate. Second, they take a fees. I said it. No problem. It goes. Within eight hours, twenty-four hours, whatever, abroad in India it reaches instantly, no problem. But abroad sometimes it takes time. It depends on the country. So, it, but it's always connected to the bank. Your bank account is there, or you're sending through a card, or through Western Union, or some other payment gateways. So it's always a bank or a third party is involved. You have to have that. Then, then only the money can move. Now, it moves, and all the information is stored in this in a centralized cloud or a centralized database that's how it's being done now great so what's the big idea again if i go to a bank which is on a bitcoin enabled network right what happens i go i have a digital identity of mine automatically i give the hash or the digital identity to the bank it confirms whether i have the money in my account it confirms what is the global market rate for the dollar say 74 rupees 60 paise for example and it says here it goes within seconds the money is transferred to my daughter what's the difference now a it took the market rate it did not take the bank rate because that's the global rate it, it's connected to the global rate second it charged me say five dollars for the transaction i said fantastic why because they say we're not actually doing anything we're just making a couple of key entries it's five dollars that's it now if i transfer a million dollars Regular from a regular bank, it'll charge me a couple of thousand dollars as transfer charges. If I transfer a million dollars on a Bitcoin-enabled bank network, it'll still charge me five dollars. If I transfer a hundred million, still five dollars. That is the difference. Huge saving for banks which move onto the blockchain, and that's where a lot of banks are moving, including Indian banks. But the more important thing, this actually encapsulates the three fundamentals of blockchain. That is, it is disintermediated. There is no intermediary. Your bank is gone. I don't need a bank. This is gone. I don't need to transfer from here to here. It just goes one to do without anybody. Second is distributed all over the world. I don't know where my data is. A hacker does not know where my data is. Here, everybody knows where my data is. And it's decentralized. It's not on the centralized. There is no centralized authority which controls it. It's decentralized and therefore trustful. For those of you who are into programming and creating solutions, apps, etc., blockchain is going to be called programmable trust, and that is the programmable language of the future. So, as we all know, well, we got right now how it is. All our data can be there can be human errors, there can be tampering, there can be deletions, they can be they can lose, and you know files can get lost a lot of people have left the country with thousands of dollars and crores of rupees because they could manipulate the system now not going to be possible if they're on the blockchain so now your single ledger has become shared distributed basically the instead of putting all your data in one box or one block it is in hundreds and thousands of blocks that's blockchain and that's why when they say we won't trust anything unless it's on the blockchain that's the relevance of that statement because now your data is distributed if anybody has to get into your data or hack into data it doesn't have to hack into one block it has to hack into hundreds and thousands of blocks and is almost impossible that's why 
data sanctity, security, surety is a must because today's digital gold is data. And that's what blockchain protects. So where did this start? A quick look at where it starts and then I'll tell you what your opportunities in this space and what's happening in the Indian landscape also. 2008, a lot of you may know that there was a global market crash. Lehman Brothers and millions of other small, medium-sized, big-sized businesses crashed when there was a market crash. And it was also called the subprime crisis in the United States. This was because of a lot of discrepancies and bullying by American banks internationally as well as in America. The, you know, the repercussions were felt everywhere. Every, everywhere they suffered. There was a big market crash. Somebody said, well, listen, this can't happen. Why should banks or any one entity, single centralized entity, start making decisions like this? Why can't we have a decentralized entity? Why can't we have a decentralized service where we, the people, have the power? And then, my friends, came Satoshi Nakamoto, and on October 31st, 2008, he published a white paper. A white paper? Well, he said, he explained brilliantly, and I, if those of you who are fans of blockchain or crypto must download this paper to understand what a wonderful solution he created. He says, I don't need banks for, for transferring digital assets. We don't need a middleman. We don't need a third party. We can do business peer to peer, you to me, through a mechanism called the consensus mechanism, which is like exactly how a democracy runs, like what we're doing now. So he did this in 2008. However, the interesting part is, who was Satoshi Nakamoto, who created such a revolution that even banks were scared, the governments were scared. Wow, a really good solution has come up and it's threatening the banking system, our financial system, the way our financial system has been running for years. So who was Satoshi Nakamoto? Let's find out. Friends, there was no Satoshi Nakamoto by name, really. Nobody really knows. It's a rumor. It's a pseudonym or a name he used because he felt that the bank authorities, the government authorities may get after him. They may arrest him. They may try and knock him off, you know, no morning walk type. And then it is believed that these are four companies which actually did it. There was no individual. They believe It's a belief. It's not proof. But it's a belief that Samsung and Toshi came and gave Satoshi from Sa and Toshi. Nakamichi and Motorola gave Nakamoto the name Satoshi Nakamoto. These four companies, it is believed, put together their resources, their brains, their intelligence and money and created a beautiful network decentralizing the way data was being treated. That was blockchain. So very quickly, first, no one understood what the hell is this? What is this? Nobody understood. Anyway, next, by the time the first transaction was done in 2009, when 10,000 Bitcoins were used to buy two Papa John's pizza, things had started moving. By the way, the Bitcoin was never to be invented. It was only invented to show a proof of concept that yes, a digital asset in which they called a bit small bit of a coin, it was called Bitcoin, can move from A to B without the bank. It was used as a proof of mechanism, that's all. But it became, we all know, just 42,000 yesterday and going further. Anyway. Awareness took place in five years. Five years it took corporates and people to understand this technology. I was very fortunate to have been part of the awareness stage because I was also there initially for the Bitcoin. I wanted to make some money on it, yeah. But I stayed back and I stayed back for blockchain. So I went in for the speculation and stayed back for the revolution. Speculation is crypto and Bitcoins. Revolution is blockchain. So the awareness, five years, a lot of experimenting was done, a lot of tweaking was done, a lot of trial and error was done, a lot of projects were launched, failed, flopped, succeeded, lots of things happening. But in 1618, the real experimentation began because the, the, because the technology became very robust and the Bitcoin started being very beautifully and that mechanism was said could be used, that's called a trust mechanism, can be used in any different business and it started being used. By the time 2018 came, many large enterprises started using blockchain and it's just the beginning. We are on the ground floor and right now the transformation phase is going on. A lot of new, new things are happening in the blockchain world and you are in the middle of it. Best time ever to be in the blockchain space. 
some sectors which use banking, government, retail, you name the sector. There are about a dozen sectors here. But trust me, it's in every sector. You know, I have a discussion on Tuesday. We are putting, we're actually putting that ladies broadcasting studios and their entire functionalities on the blockchain. Completely different. People said, why the hell are we recording studio to go? I will explain to you later on, maybe in some other session, why we, that, that's where the media part comes in. Copyrights, IPs, stories, songs can now all be protected in the original owner's place. India is seeing a booming of NFTs, the non-fungible tokens in the art space, in the collectible space. It's all connected, all because of blockchain. That's for another day. In the meantime, I will look at a lot of slices. India too is having a lot of projects. This is the government of India. A lot of projects happening on the blockchain. Lots of them, different sectors, different states. Land registry, as you can see, is very common. Land registry is the number one use case. Governance, records management, cybersecurity, digital birth certifications, even driving licenses. Arashra put, Thane put the property taxes recently on the blockchain. Lots of things are happening. So before I go to what experts speak, I want you to see a very little one minute video on what are the different use cases of blockchain and there are lots of them coming up i'm going to show you 10 of them 10 little cases which basically tell us where else we are using blockchain we're using blockchain in a lot of spaces yes but where else are we using it let's have a look at that have a look at this blockchain the open source digital ledger is known as the backbone of cryptocurrencies but the tech community has been busy finding other innovative ways to apply the technology. So let's take a look at just some of its potential uses. The first is banking. The existing banking system is complex and often slow due to multiple layers of intermediation. Blockchain provides a secure way of sending digital assets without these third parties. Not only could this simplify the banking process, but it could also open the doors to those with no previous access to financial services. Next is real estate. Without the need for middlemen, this sector could also see vast changes. Blockchain can process title deeds, facilitate transactions, and even grant access to properties through smart keys. The technology could streamline property sales, saving buyers time and money. In third is legal services. In a similar way to real estate, blockchain could disrupt the practice of law through smart contracts. These are legally binding contracts that are written in code so they can be executed exactly as intended. Next, we have online voting. Blockchain companies are exploring the potential to digitalize voting systems. The fear of hackers manipulating online votes could be put to rest by encrypted blockchains, creating a transparent and secure voting system. The fifth potential use of blockchain is financial trading. The Nasdaq Stock Exchange announced it would consider blockchain as a means of recording transactions and data. If the system is successful, it might be replicated in exchanges across the world. Next up is food production. Blockchain technology can also be used to simplify the way we produce food, tracking goods from farm to fork. Efficiency in the supply chain would mean more profit for companies, improved food safety and fresher produce. In seventh is airlines, who are exploring the capacity of blockchain to speed up passenger identification and processing. It could cut down the amount of time spent in queues and passports could be stored on the ledger itself. Following this is personal identification. Blockchain could merge all sources of ID into one open source and secure record. This would reduce theft and loss of documentation while protecting the individual's right to privacy. The ninth use is music rights. Blockchain can be used to improve the rights of producers and musicians in an era of digital streaming. 
the ledger could facilitate instant transmissions of artistic royalties each time a song is played online. And finally, the healthcare industry. It's exploring the potential of blockchain in the exchange of data. That's right. Lots of things happening again in this space. So now we will understand the rest of it. That's the very exciting part for all of us to have. What is the job space for all of us? We are at the end of the day. We are studying. We want a great job in that space. And yeah, why not? Everybody wants a great job. Here's your opportunity, guys, to understand the space a little better and get that job. Let's see what experts are saying. And experts say Gartner says it's going to be a $3 trillion business by 2030. India's GDP right now is not yet $3 trillion, not even close, not really very close as yet, but still we'll reach there one day for sure. But that's a different matter. I'm just showing you the magnitude of the size, the size of a single technology larger than the GDP, not only of India, but of several other countries. That's the size. Second, the growth in blockchain developers, 400% in the last year. We had pandemic, guys. We all know that everyone has suffered from there in some way or the other, personally or economically or in many other impact ways. But here's one thing which says, listen, guys, I refuse to go down. I got a 400% growth year on year. Wow. Next, NASCOM had done a survey in 2019-20 and found out that globally we got just about 60,000 skill resources. Well, maybe now 80,000, maybe 90,000 now, but that's about it. all globally. Now, what do these three things mean? Look at the red lines 3 million, 400 percent. That it means three things opportunity, opportunity, and more opportunity for all of us, for students, for, for people like professionals like us opportunity major because there is a shortage huge shortage nascom of course said we got two million developers in india only five thousand possess blockchain skills maybe now eight thousand or ten thousand now this is about a year and a half back but that's nothing we are an it giant and with about ten thousand developers oh nothing really nothing and we of course saw that linkedin says it's the most in demand job skill i'll show you some headlines which prove that even recruiters are saying salaries for ready to be deployed professionals with blockchain background are twice that of one without blockchain expertise. That's a big statement. He's Paul Dupua, the MD of Ransand India, recruits big time for Amazon, IBM, Tech Mahindra, Wipros, you name them TCS. He's a big time recruiter. And that's the problem or the solution. Blockchain is a solution for double salaries. In fact, now they become tripled, by the way. Now for the students, the last leg. Where are the jobs? Well, the jobs are here. For those who love the technologies, who love to work on Java, Pythons, and all those things which can give you a kick, you can become a blockchain developer. Yes, there is a blockchain developer who works on blockchain platforms. There are blockchain engineers, just like you have other engineers. There are blockchain engineers as well quality engineers, tech and solution architects. That's the techie. If you're a real hardcore techie, you want to get into making great products, great applications, that's where your space is. If you are in the data analytics space, and also if you have some tech knowledge, it's fine. If you don't have, also it's fine. You can become a data scientist. You can become a research analyst, risk analyst, or those of you and there's a lot of people who I know now are becoming entrepreneurs. You have some great ideas. You want to start your entrepreneur journey, get into a startup space. That's exactly what you can do. But that's not enough. There's more. For those who are not from a technical background, like, for example, could be BBA, MBA students or e-commerce students or anybody else in that space, you got huge opportunities as well. There is a huge requirement for blockchain project managers. Blockchain attorneys. Who is a blockchain attorney? The guy who knows all about the compliances, the legalities of blockchain and cryptocurrency. That's a blockchain attorney. He's like a chartered accountant of blockchain, you can say. A tech recruiter, you can become a tech recruiter. You can become a product manager. You can become a marketing manager. Oh, my. There's a crypto journalist, community managers. We're in very big demand in India right now. Crypto community managers. is in the last three to four months. Huge demand in India. Great. Salaries as well. 
analyst relation managers, business development, ICO advisors, this initial coin offerings. Now we have we have the IPO that is the initial public offerings. Now we have ICO, IEO, IDOs. All these IEO, IDO, ICO are basically all blockchain based jobs and blockchain based terms. Basically, guys who know about cryptocurrencies and blockchain. These are the ones who will advise which are the good coins to invest in, which is, you know, they're basically great advisors or they're advisors on whenever anybody's going public in the blockchain domain. And that's a lot of companies. India has got more than 400 now in India companies. There. So salaries for freshers, if you could just go to payscale.com, Google search fresher blockchain salaries, a lot of them appear, good salaries to great salaries. Here's an opportunity wheel. I wanted to put all the types of jobs into a wheel. And the wheel is not at all in favor of any one techie or non-techie. They have great opportunities for both. This little round circle has got 16 slices. Of the 16 slices, about eight are techie-based and eight are non-technology-based. And look at the scoring. On a scale of 9 to 10, the demand... For a blockchain engineer is 9 on 10, fantastic. For a developer, 9 on 10, fantastic. Right on the other side, we have a marketing guy in blockchain with a 9 on 10. A project manager here, 8.5 on 10, almost the same. So the top two technology jobs are almost equivalent to the top two non-technology jobs. That is the beauty of blockchain. You do not need to only know technology from a technical perspective or a programming perspective. That is what's brilliant about blockchain. Some of the recruiters, or there are lots of these. These are just some of them. These are the ones I'm training right now. And these are the ones which keep asking me, Raj, get me some good guys. I'm happy to, happy to bring them over to Rai University for sure. Before we end, here's what we really need to know. By 2024, just another three years from now, blockchain Corporations, that is, companies will be spending $20 billion per year for their technical services. Who's going to manage those technical services? You. That's your opportunity. Blockchain-based projects will add $360 billion of value by, by 2026. Who's going to manage these projects? Who's going to be a project manager here, guys? Well, obviously, it's going to be you. You are the future. And the world's largest banks have figured out that they are investing 50 billion. By the way, this they've already done now, and they have built a blockchain-based digital cash settlement system. Banks have spent 50 billion dollars. They won't spend it unless they're going to make a lot of saving, but they've done it, and that's it. They've, that, that's the big amount of money in blockchain they've invested. By 2025, 55 percent of healthcare applications will go on blockchain. Investments are up 20 percent, and financial companies. Because they invested 50 billion bucks in it, I figured out that they're saving, oh, they're saving 12 billion bucks a year. Great return on investment by using just blockchain. So what else is being done outside? Australia has made blockchain a priority and is looking for blockchain professionals from even countries like outside Australia to come in. And they're welcoming them with open arms, we'll open the PR section specifically for them, for only for blockchain professionals. And they're fast tracking the PR visas for them, by the way. Similar thing is happening in Canada. Canada also has opened its arms to blockchain professionals. I'm not saying other professionals are not great, but blockchain plus other technologies, fantastic. You got yourself a winner. So we have a, a couple of things now. Before I wrap up, if I was to give you seven reasons, I think I'll have a lucky seven guys, seven reasons why you need a blockchain certification for your future. And mind you, a certification is a proof that you have actually mastered a particular subject. And that's why internationally, in, the, in India, all my clients, etc., all keep on asking us for certified blockchain professionals. They don't want somebody who knows a little bit of blockchain. A little bit anybody learns is ad hoc. We want it to be a structured, and that's what they need in India now because blockchain adoption is becoming big in India. So what are the seven reasons? One. It's cutting-edge technology. Yeah, we already know that now. Second, it's in very, very high demand. Really, seriously, the demand is so high and the supply is so low. 
it's making people very, very upset that, you know, they have to pay lots of salaries, which is a great thing for students. And corporates are saying, all right, we don't mind investing in the salaries because we're getting great blockchain professionals. They're at very high demand. For every regular engineer, one regular engineer, there are five blockchain engineers in demand. So that's the, it's five times higher than ours. Three, it's got vast infrastructure. Blockchains everywhere. The infrastructure goes everywhere. Fourth, multiple industries on the blockchain. We saw a video. There are, what, 10 case, use cases you saw. There are actually hundreds. But that's good enough to know. Integration with new age technology is the point number five. Well, blockchain works with everybody. Cloud, yes. AI, ML, yes. Wait, cloud computing, yes. I said yes. IoT, yes. Cybersecurity, yes. It says yes to everybody. It's inclusive and not intrusive. And that's what makes it brilliant because you don't need to replace any technology. You need to view and integrate blockchain with them. It works together. Sixth is at the inflection point of today. What is the inflection point? The point when it's going to take off. It's taking off already, guys. And seven, good pay and great career prospects. Well, as we all know, we all want a good pay. We want a good pay package when we join. More important is look at your careers. It has taken our parents 25, 30 years to get the salaries what they get now. It can take you just two or three years to get the same salaries in the blockchain domain. But almost six, eight months back, we've hired in Mumbai a chief blockchain officer. His salary, oh, he's got 10 or 12 years experience of maybe three or four years in blockchain. His salary was 2.14. That is the sort of salaries they get. And just about 12 years experience in other spaces. I mean, 12 years, you don't get that much. Not You get good salaries, but you don't get brilliant salaries. Here's a chance to get your brilliant salaries. So with that, I would like to bring to an end my session today, guys. Blockchain is here for us. It's for you. It's for me. Um, well, the, the blockchain world is not ending. Every day I am having meetings, international, Indian. It's, I used to have, two years back, I used to have maybe three or four meetings a day. It's multiplied by three times. It's 3x now, and it's not ending. So uh, that's it from me right now. And I'm coming back on screen view. So if you have any questions for me, oh, feel free and ask me. I'm here for you guys. <laughs> It was really a wonderful presentation, Raj. Really insightful. So here I am. Okay. A lot of inspiring. Okay. Gadam Deep from India. All right. A lot of people from some women's college. Great. Happy to hear. Oh, Mandeep Kaur. Morning. A lot of them. I'm seeing in the chat box. Right. Raj, I so have a question in my chat. Yeah, I have a question in my chat box from another one. Uh, so he was asking what? about uh, a NFT. I think NFT you have uh, shared yeah. slightly somewhere. I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you a brief about NFT. Yeah. Uh, it's it's yeah. a very hot topic in India right now. NFT stands for non-fungible tokens. What does a non-fungible token mean? A fungible token is like, say, a 100 rupee note. If I give you a 100 rupee note, you can return it to me. If I give you a loan of 100 rupee note, you can give me back in 250 rupee notes or 520 rupee notes. Okay. That's fungible. Same value. 100, whether it is 520s, 250s, or 1010s, same value. Non fungible is a perceived value where you don't have, where it is a rare, where you decide what is the value of it. Where, for example, the Mona Lisa is a great painting. I consider it. Maybe average. Somebody says, no, it's not average. I'm ready to pay $100 million for it. I'll say, I'll take a poster and stick it on the wall for 20, but 50 rupees may poster. That's perceived value. There is no, it is not the value of the paper it is printed or the canvas it is printed. It is the value which is perceived by human beings. So non fungibles are basically collectibles. Uh, to give you an example, we are, I'm doing an NFT project for one of the largest business houses in India. Then it's an NFT on Indian cricketers. We must have just two days back. Everybody knows football. Lionel Messi. Everybody knows Messi. Lionel Messi is a great footballer. He has created his own NFT. He is selling his memorabilia, that is, his old t shirts, his old boots, moments from his interviews or anything. 
at a price. He's put it on an NFT platform. An NFT platform is like the Amazon platform for rare collectibles. You can put them up, people buy it. And that's a huge community around that. It is the best thing in India right now. As I said in the beginning of my news, which you saw, Indian artists and also the Indian artists, which were never seen anywhere, can get recognition world over by putting their digital artwork on the NFT. So an NFT is basically anything which has a value much more than what it is printed on. Another example, we have a India two paisa, one paisa coin, which I think Shailesh Ji and I must have seen, Rajiv, you might have seen. The younger generation has never seen it. What? The value of it is not one paisa. If I go and sell it today, if I have it, it's a collectible item. I can sell it for thousands of rupees to a collector. And NFT gives you that opportunity to come to a marketplace and bring all these things together. It is embedded with blockchain certified certification to prove its authenticity and ownership. So no one can dispute the ownership when you have an NFT embedded asset. That is an NFT. It's a non-fungible token. It's the biggest rage right now happening. It's not just a rage. It is made, enabled only because of blockchain, because blockchain can prove provenance ownership. Now, if I have a digital painting, I put it up on the net. When I sell it automatically through a smart contract mechanism, it gets transferred to the new buyer if he has spent paid me the money which I have asked for. Every time it moves, the ownership also shifts automatically. And the authenticity certification is embedded inside. So therefore, I know it's not just a Photoshop copy or a Xerox copy or a downloaded print. It's the authentic digital painting or asset. So it is a digital asset in a way. It, it is it's a digital, a digital asset with an embedded yeah. certificate of authenticity through a blockchain because blockchain is immutable. Blockchain right. certification is immutable. Right. right. So uh, another small query coming to me here, uh, like smart contract and the normal. Uh, like the normal contract. contract. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Good question, because every one of you who is going to go into this business world is going to be using smart contract. Let me show you. Let me give you an example. Uh, mm -hmm. Let us take a very simple example of a rental agreement. I am taking uh, Rajiv has got his house in Delhi. I want to come to Delhi. He's got an extra space. He says, we, I will lease it out to you. I'm saying, very good. I, he, I will give you this and we have a contract. The rent will be 25,000 rupees a month. It will be for 11 months. And after 11 months, it'll become 30,000 rupees, whatever the terms are there. We put it into a paper document. We get it stamped, notarized, and registered. That's your regular contract. Now, a smart contract is exactly the same here. We put it all on the blockchain. All the terms and conditions are put on the blockchain. A contract, that is a digital contract, is made and it self executes. I don't have to keep renewing it. I don't have to keep registering it. I don't have to keep reminding automatically from my. Uh, uh, account it keeps cutting everything is on a smart contract because it is agreed upon by two parties and this is a very small example of it much larger contracts of when the payment should be released how it should be released what conditions all of them are built into the contract but basically is a smart contract is a contract which is self-executing and can create no middleman in the whole process that's what blockchain stands for removing the middleman removing creating a less friction process a frictionless process so smart contracts remove the friction and remove the middleman which is unnecessarily in the middle and take time money and sometimes there are also dishonest it removes all this this is a very small example it was a much larger subject for some other time but that's the base right yeah. any other question oh, i have think i have one question here by shantanu he says so by that nature wouldn't that also make it hard for cyber security officials to track some shady transactions let me ask you a question, Shantan. Uh, do you think shady transactions have started only now in the last few years? No, they were always there. Yes. Second, you can track shady transactions from any way you like. It depends on the blockchain. The blockchains have an, uh, have an uh, option for an Oracle. The Oracle can intervene and find that out. So you don't have to worry about shady transactions like, all oh, right, even you, you, for example, ransom. People were holding people on ransom even before. They were saying they were kidnapping people and people were paying ransom. People were doing money laundering. Hawala business is a very famous uh, term in India. It was being done before blockchain. 
Who has raised Hawala so far? We have got our money in Swiss accounts. Has the government been able to figure out whose money is in the Swiss accounts? This came before blockchain. With blockchain, it brings in certain protocols, certain systems. You cannot eliminate everything. You bring in systems of trackability, traceability. Example, let's talk about how it, I'll just give you one example. World Bank. World Bank sends money. Oh, yeah. Yagnesh, I'll answer this question for you later on. The World Bank, yeah, that's, uh, maybe this will answer your question, Yagnesh. The World Bank says, we just we get money for education, infrastructure, healthcare. But in developing countries, and this is not only for India, it's in developing countries, we do not know how the money is spent. Whether it has reached the last per the person whom it's supposed to be, whether it has gone through the right agencies, the right people, etc., etc. So the World Bank says, you put your systems on the blockchain so we can track and trace. When was the money put into the account? When did it come to India, for example? How was it distributed? Who were the beneficiaries? Did they get the full amount? When did they get the full amount? Did they make use of the money in the correct way? All that is on the blockchain embedded with smart contracts. Therefore, bringing about accountability, traceability. And if it's for the poor, it should reach the poor. If it's in their Jandhan accounts or something, we should be able to track it. There should be no middleman saying, okay, sir, I'll get you, I'll make sure you get money from the scheme and I'm taking 50% of it or 20%. That's what's happening today. There are middlemen who take money to get you the money from various schemes. That is going to be eliminated. Agricultural subsidies. Everything will be also on the blockchain. Therefore, impacting the last mile, there is the rural India, which is unaware of all these things, which doesn't even have access to sometimes so many things we should have. So that will be, that is one of the ways. The second way, in the education space is being impacted in a big way. We have a project going on in Africa right now, and hopefully India also somebody wakes up. We have a community <coughs> which doesn't send its children in the rural in India, rural Africa for studying. Why? Because they send the kids to do housework or clean cars or beg so that they get money in the house. Why? Because they don't have money for their education. So we've actually created a complete education ecosystem where we, whenever the kids go to, when the kids go to school, they get certain tokens or crypto or coins, and when they get good marks or certain marks, they get certain coins, and these coins go towards their scholarships for the future. Thereby, and their further education. Thereby, these poor people is say, okay, I'll send my children because they can get a future. Like this, they have no future, but creating a future for them. But that's one of the things we're trying to do in rural Africa. Uh, somebody has approached us in India also. Let's see how it goes. It's a very large NGO. We are working with them. Let's see how that goes. There are so many more, but of course, if we can have another lots and lots of sessions on this. Uh, we can keep going on and on, but I'm sure uh, we need to do that much more work. Also. Anything else for me, guys? Uh, Raja, last question that came to me about... Uh, so uh, one last I question from my end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll take two questions. No problem. Yeah. Dr. Sailis first, because I already had <laughs> two yeah, questions. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, so it is regarding uh, the certifications uh, that you were talking about, which are the global certifications that students should be looking at. I think that's a question which Rajiv Bortolo and his team will do it because they are very well, they are fantastic. They have actually been certified in telling or talking about this. I think, Rajiv, maybe you can answer this question after my session. And yeah, these sessions, and this certification, just for your information, is recognized globally. And also, it earns credits in going in for some colleges going outside also. So that's a big plus also. Rajiv, you can give the more detailed explanation later on. And yeah, any questions you have, yeah. Rajiv? Uh, yeah, I just said that, uh, that for cloud computing, like uh, uh, um, uh, software as a service or infrastructure as a service and also what is BUS, blockchain as a service that is coming up for all the IT guys. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a good yeah. question. Amazon, like IBM, that. everyone is into yeah, yeah. bus. No. Yeah. Uh, I'll explain to you. Uh, example is quite simple. If I'm a company, I, I, I don't have the funds to create my own blockchain because it is too expensive to make it from scratch. I can use a part of it whenever I want. I can use a blockchain and pay for that use. It's something like Uber. Let's, let's imagine Uber right now. Uber, I don't need to have a car. But whenever I want a car, I can use the ride Uber as a service. I think we lost uh, connectivity with you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Am I audible now? 
you are audible now, not earlier, right? Actually. All right. Sorry. So, yeah. uh, blockchain is a service. Compare blockchain now to Uber. Uber, whenever I want a ride, I will book an Uber when I want it, take my ride, pay for that, and finish it off. Right? Same thing. It's not my car. It's not my company. I'm only using it as a service. Just the same way, blockchain, there are many blockchains which are being used as a service. A very classic example is the JP Morgan blockchain. All Indian, seven Indian banks and one public bank, that is State Bank of India, have taken the service of that blockchain. They're using it as a service. They do not have their own blockchains while they build their own blockchains which is a large process and integrate with each other and the Nash and the RBI and the NCPI, they use the blockchain provided by JP Morgan for which they give them a rent or a cost as and when it's a transaction rent for every transaction they pay them. That's it. That is blockchain as a service. Uber is the same. Ola is the same. Swiggy is the same. You don't own the restaurant or you don't own the food or you don't own the, or the guy with the bike or his, or he or, or the swiggy delivery boy but you get the service at the time when you need it same thing with blockchain thanks thanks Raj. <coughs> so hemant has asked whether the gentleman boy called hemant tank tank who is which who is the biggest blockchain company a yeah, blockchain is open source so a uh, blockchain doesn't belong to anybody but uh, blockchain who uses more blockchain there's a there are companies like consensus ibm they're big users but there's no big blockchain company the two most popular platforms however are hyperledger and ethereum and they're open source again so there's no blockchain company as such blockchain services company there are plenty but blockchain doesn't belong to anybody it's open source so, uh, Raj, as you said, Hyperledger and Ethereum. So, Ethereum is a uh, public blockchain, I guess. Uh, yes. And Hyperledger yes. is a private blockchain. Yes. And there is also a third one, Hybrid. Hybrid, yes. You're right. And, and Dragon Chain, I guess, is Dragon Chain is a hybrid, uh, which is there that's, in the center of excellence that's, right that's, now. You can use that as, yeah, hybrid and you can use it as a BAS also, blockchain as a service service as well so dragon chain has multiple most... utility so i think the college students right now can use uh, uh, get a, a a feel of a private yeah. public mixing them together in the hybrid using yeah. the dragon chain platform which has been given to the center of excellence that's so right that's, that's right they can yeah. practice okay. and play around on that yeah so right. start with and then they can start specializing right right <laughs> right guys yeah, I think so I, now uh, all the questions have been answered and I, I don't think there are any queries from the student side. Uh, we may be running out of time also, so I would not be, uh, I, I don't see any questions also, fine. So uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Raj Kapoor and Mr. Rajiv for the excellent uh, session and excellent explanation. It has always been a pleasure to have you with us during any of the sessions. And uh, it is very well explained. I mean, the feedback, uh, the chat that we are seeing right now. Uh, all, all the audience have really appreciated and most of the participants are now ahead for Rai University and other university students also. Uh, on behalf of uh, Rai University, I would like to thank you uh, for giving such an excellent session and having your valuable time. As you said that you were already having a session from 9 to 11 and then immediately you have consented and you have been part. That's a really great pleasure for us. And uh, we hope that uh, this would continue for the future. Also, we'll have some detailed session. Thank our provost, sir, uh, our registrar, sir, and the entire team of CSCIT for making this possible. The entire small small supports that we required uh, uh, for making this webinar possible was provided by them. 
thank you very much again and uh, the advanced technology webinar series we are having it on a regular basis and uh, it has been flashed also in the scrolling screen that uh, what are the uh, next sessions we have full stack development coming up and uh, we also have a cyber crime session along with oracle also coming up very soon so probably uh, just stay tuned to our channel and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you get our regular updates thank you very much uh, raj sir and rajiv sir for your valuable time again um, i would just like to sign off with this words thank you thank you guys thank you dr shalesh and thanks rajiv and team and i'll see you sometime soon bye bye yeah thank you thank you thank you so much and thanks a lot raj thanks dr shalesh thank you offered in the field of pharmacy engineering data science cyber security management law science life sciences commerce and psychology come and realize your aspirations at rai university and